Today we're up to doing a four foot tall horizontal cedar fence with plated Postmaster posts on top of existing concrete at Cody Craft Brewing. Conveniently located right down the street from SWI. It's gonna be a nice accent for an outdoor patio. So what we've already done so far is we have all of our Postmaster posts. On this side, they're already anchored into the concrete. Per post, we've used two half inch by three inch concrete lag screws. So much better than the old concrete anchor type where you run the nut down, suck the all thread up. A lot more of a cleaner finished look. We've got one more to do over there. We've learned over the course of years to be efficient, it's better to get all of your posts set at once and then move on to the next process. So before we start ripping two by fours, we're gonna go ahead and finish over there. Come on. So over here, we're gonna do another patio, but they have chosen to keep this side open because they're doing food trucks over there. So they wanna allow access for people to get through to go from the brewery to the food trucks. How do we figure out where all those posts need to go? He's going through and he is putting our corners in place and then we're gonna go ahead and run a string line. I know, you're gonna use a what? We use them sometimes, okay? Cut me some slack. Get it, like cut me some slack, some slack of the string line. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and plumb our posts up to the string line and then mark our holes of where those posts need to go. Right before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and mark our posts out evenly so they're evenly spaced. We don't do the six foot section, six foot section, six foot section, two feet. Yeah, that, that's wrong. Make sure that your end result and your end product is awesome. Let's do this. Baby shark, doo -doo -doo -doo, baby shark, doo -doo -doo, baby shark. All right, seriously, let's go, come on. He's already got our tape ran out from one post to the other. To the very end, we have 30 feet. Well, that's, that's pretty easy. What do we need when we're doing horizontal fence? When you're gonna turn the board, bird, I was gonna say bird. When you turn the board, when you turn the board horizontal, you can only go to a six foot span. You can do eight foot, but the boards that we have are six foot tall. We don't have the board stretcher. If we did, we would do that, but we don't have the board stretcher. If you have eight foot boards, sure, yes, definitely, absolutely, you can. Uh, I don't think I would go any further than an eight foot section, just so you know. You wanna make sure and have one of these things with you because if you don't, you just set that post to the string. Well, that looks great right there, but really, if you put a level on it, we're now an inch and a quarter or so off that string. Make sure to level off of the string and don't just guess. Just make sure that the post that was marked just comes straight back and it stays right there because if the holes varied just a little bit from that plate to that plate, we wouldn't know it and we would be mixing the posts then. So we like to keep everything with the post that was originally laid out. Connor over here, he's using a leaf blower in conjunction with the hammer drill. So he's got the leaf blower set up so that, that way it's blowing the dust away from him. Smart thinking. Now, if you're looking for a plated Postmaster post, because you're gonna be putting a cedar fence on top of concrete, make sure and see the link below. Let us know if you're looking for something. Perfect. Now you gotta remember if you're gonna do plated posts, what kind of shims should you be using? but composite. Now another thing you can use, you can use washers as well. Washers are the same thickness overall, so they're a little bit harder to work with. And if you wanna use a shim, just make sure that you use a composite shim. Now, if you're looking for some shims you don't have any, see the link below. These shims, they're nice, they're awesome. 100% composite. Now, if you wanna see how to, the full instructions on how to set a plated post, make sure and see this video right here. All right, so we got all of our posts installed. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and look back across the top of our post to figure out if we got some that are high, some that are low, we're just gonna go ahead and take that average, just make them flow really nice. If you get choppy, your fence is gonna look choppy and you don't want to have kind of a, you know, a choppy looking fence. Uh, right now, we cut our post just a hair long, so we're gonna go ahead and follow the slope, but we're gonna take the average of what is level across. So I can see 
from this post all the way across all the other posts but this post right here is just that much taller than the rest so what we're going to have connor do is he's going to hold that marker for me and i'm going to sight that marker in up a little bit uh stop right there and then that next one back we're just probably about just a touch high too down stop so these two posts there's a little bit of a hump here in the concrete so we're going to go ahead and cut that out and make everything flow really nice So now Connor has gone ahead for us and he has taken a two by four, he's cut it in half and then he's ripped the two by four in half. What these are gonna be is these are gonna be our nailers. So we're gonna attach them to each side of the post just like so. And this is what we're gonna nail our pickets onto. Now I'm sure you're asking yourself, is there a special kind of hardware that you should be using when dealing with cedar fence? You should be using stainless steel fasteners. If you don't want black streaks, Use some stainless steel screws. Make sure and see the link below. So we're going to be looking to put three to four stainless steel screws in per nailer. All right, so what we're gonna do right here, I got some three quarter inch spacers because we want a three quarter inch gap. We're gonna do one simple mock-up to make sure everything's good and then we can go ahead and cut loose on making the rest of these pickets. Because the last thing we wanna do is cut all the pickets and find out we did it wrong. Start small, go big. We're gonna put one nail on each side of the picket right now and that's just because it is just a mock-up until we make sure everything is 100% good. There you have it. That's what we're gonna look like. Pallet fencing, I, I saw that the other day. Pallet fencing, people, somebody called this, that's a nice pallet fence. Are you serious? That's a horizontal cedar fence. That's not a pallet fence. Oh yeah. Hey, look at this, it looks, it looks great. We can continue. Perfect. Now, before I get too much further, if you're curious at all what we use for nails, we do use stainless steel ring shank nails and we use this kind of a gun. We used to use the Duo Fast, but now we switched to this one because this is a lot better gun. And this one actually is serviceable, unlike our other ones. So you can get parts for this one. If you're looking for a gun, make sure and see the link below. All right, so now we gotta put this nailer on so we can start putting our face pickets on. About four nails to do that. Now these are just the caps. We don't need to go getting wild on them. We don't need a thousand nails per, don't need that. All right, so nobody wants to have an awesome looking horizontal to your fence and then, dude, I can still see the post. We're not like that though, we're gonna hide that post because you don't wanna look at it and we don't want you to be mad because you do have to look at it. That's why we do the face cover pickets. We also do ones on the back too. Make sure it lines up with each side so we can cover those nail holes and make everything nice. We're gonna do one nail there. We're gonna line up everything else. Two nails on the top, two nails on the bottom. We'll go two in the middle. That way everything is nice and clean. 
but you can't see that dang post. Here we just did a video, or here we just, here we did a video. Did you guys know that we did a video? Pull it together, Dan, come on. Here we did a corner. What we did was we just did an overlap, an overlap, and this was a nailer for each way of the corner. Now we're gonna do the corner cap this direction and it's gonna overlap that other cap that we just put on, right there. The backside picket, because we don't have too much meat, this one right here will catch it. But like, especially in this corner, we're gonna have to try and guess where those holes are for those screws that we're gonna put in for our cover pickets. So that's why we're not using a nail gun on the backside and we're using screws because it's a guessing game. Hey, look at that. I got that one. I got that one too. And now we got these little thingies. They're stays. They're gonna go in the middle of the sections because if we don't put these in, what's gonna happen is these pickets are gonna do whatever the pickets wanna do. Cause that's a wood product and they're gonna warp and bend and twist. And we're gonna put these in to control it as best as we possibly can. Because without them, this picket go out, this, you know, you can see kind of the, anything is possible. We just did a, Two by four, cut in half, ripped in half. So one two by four, you get four stays on a four foot horizontal cedar fence. If you're gonna do an eight foot section of horizontal cedar, I would recommend doing definitely two stays. So we have a center line mark, and all we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this right here, and Connor's gonna put one nail in. And then if you do my very bottom, not yet. Okay, now you can do my very bottom. And you can go ahead and nail the whole entire thing. The only thing I can see of the Postmaster post is right here. We've hidden everything else. This already looks great. The customer loves it. He was just out here and he's like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe how awesome this is gonna be. Let's show you how awesome just a simple block is. A top cap. How much definition that finishes the fence off. So if we run that all the way around, how awesome that's gonna look and tie everything together. We started with just a butt down here Nice flat square end to end with, with the nice flat square end. And we're 45ing every post, and we're putting a screw in here. So, so far we just have 45 degree cuts. This does not look like cedar. I have a feeling that maybe some of you think, that's, that's just some really nice pine, 100% cedar. It's just like fine, fine, fine grade cedar. No rough sawn, it's all smooth sawn cedar, and really nice to work with. We couldn't be more tickled with the way that the fence turned out. The fun thing about doing cedar fence is totally getting lost in it. Letting your craftsman side of yourself just take complete control over you and seeing what kind of thing you can build. If you ever happen to be in Cody, Wyoming, make sure and stop by and check these guys out. We happen to be in Cody, Wyoming ourselves. Don't be afraid to stop in. If you wanna see more in depth how to set plated postmaster posts on top of concrete, make sure and see this video right here. And if you wanna see how to build a gate for a horizontal cedar fence, make sure and see this video right here. It's Dan with SWI. We are Wyoming's Fence Company. And you have a good dang day.